Hi everyone, my name is Nick and today we are going to be taking a look at my five hacks and tips for Microsoft Teams. Um, these are things that you may or may not already be aware of with Microsoft Teams and they're kind of hidden a little bit, um, but also very useful and powerful to know how to use them. Um, as always, if you find this video useful, then you know what to do. And with that said, let's jump on over to Microsoft Teams. Okay, so here we are just on the desktop um, and I'm just within my general channel for that office guy. And the first thing that I want to kind of point out is you can actually email directly um, into your channels, okay, for a specific um, team here. So if I want to send an email to everyone in this general channel and actually include the email in the post section, all I need to do is first of all head over to the general channel here and click on the three dots or the ellipsis. And then from here it's get email address. Okay, so if we give that a click, we are presented with this pop-up box just here, which is get email address. And then you have the email address um, for the particular channel. I can click copy uh, and it will close that down. Now, just bear in mind that every single channel that we have has a unique email address and therefore you can email um, any of your channels as you would like. Okay, so with that copied onto the clipboard, we can head over to Outlook here and start a new email. Um, and in this email, I can actually just um, paste in um, the channel, okay? So the general that office guy channel. Um, and once you've actually sent these once, you'll also be able to automatically find them again um, from your to list. Uh, so you won't have to keep copying your emails backwards and forwards all the time. Uh, once you've kind of got them once, you'll be able to easily navigate to them again. You can obviously give this uh, a title. So I'm just gonna go test email. And if you really wanted to, you could attach a file as well. Um, so I could easily just, uh, you know, go through and find something for this computer um, and go to something like uh, pictures here. And I can attach uh, this image into the email. Um, I can say here is a test email. Okay. Um, and then I can send it. Okay, what that's going to do is actually send the email to my Microsoft Teams channel uh, for that office guy. So if I just hop back over to here, we can now see that I have a Nicholas Regan via email has sent this over. Okay, and we can obviously view the original email and there's the image that we attached uh, directly into the email as well. So this is another fun way to actually um, you still use Outlook to communicate uh, via Microsoft Teams and it's very powerful if you have a lot of different channels that you'd like to communicate to, um, but also prevent people from having to use email. So one thing for me personally is I like to make sure that um, for most communications internally, I'm using Microsoft Teams and then for external, use email. However, this function, although a little bit hidden in Microsoft Teams, allows um, someone in the kind of communication sector to communicate out in Microsoft Teams using an email. Um, and that might, you might want to do that for several different reasons. Uh, one, it's obviously something a little bit more used to using email um, and you kind of get a little bit more flexibility. Uh, or, well, you get, you get a little bit more um, of ability to kind of keep an audit trail of what's been sent out, what hasn't been sent out and all those kind of things. But um, I think mainly it's just kind of bridging the gap between Outlook and uh, Microsoft Teams myself. Personally, I would just go into a new conversation, open up the um, compose options here, and actually then just turn it into an announcement um, and kind of create a nice big uh, communication that way. Um, but it's great to see that you can use emails and that every channel has a unique email address for you to use on this exact example. Um, so that's my uh, hack number one. Hack number two actually comes in talking about polls, okay? So if I wanted to put a poll out into um, this general channel, I would head over to the new conversation tab here and I'll click on the ellipsis, the three dots at the bottom there, and you'll find Microsoft Forms. If you can't see it there, you can just type in form and it will come up at the top. We can give that a click uh, and that will then take us into the next section here where you can ask a question of the entire team. So we can just say, um, uh, do you like my videos? Okay, um, and we can just say yes and no as our options, okay? 
um, and I don't want that to be multiple answers, but if I wanted to, I could. Um, otherwise, I'll just click next, um, and there we go. Now we have the, the we can actually, uh, you know, respond to this and submit a vote, or just send it directly into the channel, um, and then uh, this can just be closed down. Now you can see we have uh, a couple of different things here. We obviously have the ability to actually uh, vote. Okay, so I can say yes, I like my videos, and submit my vote. And then underneath here, we have the results of the uh, poll, okay? So we can see that one person has submitted for yes and no one for no. Um, so another way just to kind of interact with your teams and your channels here, um, and you can obviously have various different polls uh, for lots of different things, um, and it's a really useful way of gathering intel um, from Microsoft Teams and your colleagues. So really do recommend uh, using polls via Microsoft Forms uh, in this scenario. And if you're ever interested in doing a little bit more complex um, questions, then actually just head over to Microsoft Forms, uh, where you can actually build custom forms uh, more specific to your needs. But well worth uh, checking that out. And that was tip number two. So the third one actually is something really useful. Um, and some people using um, something like uh, Microsoft OneNote will be familiar with Immersive Reader. So Microsoft Teams actually has an Immersive Reader built in. And it really helps, um, you know, people with, uh, you know, sight issues or uh, dyslexia, etc., things like that. So super helpful. Um, and in order to actually navigate to this, you find a particular communication that you're looking for. So in this one here, I actually have a, a post all about the immersive reader here. Um, and if I hover above it, you'll get these options where you get to, you know, give it a thumb up. Uh, heart it and give it various different emojis and um, also you have an ellipsis if you click on that ellipsis and you can see all of these various different things here including the sharing outlook which is another thing we'll talk about another day um, but also you have the immersive reader okay if you click on the immersive reader this is going to open up the entire communication into uh, you know a larger font for you to easily read it um, but you also get a few additional levels of um, functionality here. So if we go up here to text preferences, we can change the font sizing, uh, the styles, the colors, and all those kind of things. We also get grammar, so we can format nouns, verbs, um, adverbs, etc. Um, and then this section over here uh, for reading preferences, you can actually narrow this down to a single line. You can go for three line reading um, or five line reading or have that off altogether. You can also choose different languages um, to have this in so it can translate uh, communications for you. So if you're communicating in English, but um, you know, you're communicating in a channel that may be uh, you know, in China or something like that, you can actually translate this uh, directly from the immersive reader as well, which is really useful. Um, and again, if you're dyslexic, you can actually just click on the play button. Nicholas here. Reagan at Saturday, October 10th, 2020, 1253 PM. Immersive reader. In this video, we take a look at the immersive reader and how to use it within Microsoft Teams. Nicholas Reagan. So you really get that functionality where it would actually read out the communications to um, to the person who, who basically struggles maybe with dyslexia or anything like that. So super useful feature here um, and it's embedded directly into the communications via the post channel. So really useful and that is tip number three. Okay, moving on, we have uh, the fourth tip for you which is all about your chat messages, okay? Um, and that is the ability to actually um, assign a, uh, a different delivery options, okay? So for example, uh, to my brother here, I can literally just say, um, how is your studio uh, coming on? Okay, question mark. And then what I can do is actually down here, um, we have this little kind of uh, explanation point. Uh, which is set delivery options. If we give that a click, we have the standard message, which is usually what uh, everyone will have by default. You would have uh, something that's called an important message, which we can do that. And you get an important line there just to kind of highlight um, the importance of this message. And then also there's something called urgent. Now, if you click on urgent, um, you basically it's going to notify uh, this particular person every two minutes uh, for the next 20 minutes, okay? so. Basically, they'll get 10 notifications about this one message that they've received. And um, so it's a really useful way of getting people's attention via the chat functions of Microsoft Teams, um, either using something like important or urgent. If you absolutely must get hold of someone urgently for whatever reason, um, then that is how you'd go about doing it. And they're going to get inundated 
um, with notifications until they read that message. So really useful features here. Um, I won't send that to my brother um, because I know he is building a new studio, so I'm not going to disturb him with that, but um, really useful nonetheless uh, and well worth um, maybe starting to utilize the important flags um, and urgent in those uh, really critical situations. Okay, and that was number four. So the fifth one um, actually is all about kind of knowing when someone is going to be online. So in this scenario here, we can see Chris is offline. He's been offline for about a day or so. Um, and I would like to know when he's next online, okay? So the thing to do here is actually come across to this chat message from Chris, go over to the ellipses and um, drop that down. And then there's something here called notify when available. Now, if I click that, I will get notified when um, Chris is actually next available to chat, which is absolutely uh, fantastic. In a large organizations where you're maybe trying to get hold of um, some senior level management, uh, and usually they're in and out of meetings all the time um, and getting some time to actually, you know, get them uh, know when they're actually available to talk, it can be a little bit difficult, right? So this function here basically lets you um, get a notification when their status is showing as available, okay? So if they're busy or they're uh, appearing away um, for whatever reason, then you know you, you want to basically be notified when they're available. Um, and Microsoft Teams does a fantastic job of um, switching the uh, statuses of everybody as in, uh, as per their calendars. Um, so they, uh, you know, Microsoft Teams basically knows when and people are in meetings and they're busy or if someone has set their statuses away or to appear busy. Um, but the second that it becomes available, you'll get notified that they are available to chat, which is absolutely fantastic feature as well. And guys, it is, um, those are the five top tips I have and hacks for you um, for Microsoft Teams. If you found this uh, video useful, um, then you know what to do. And with all that said, I will see you guys in the next video.